Hey guys, it's Hannah here and today I am back with the next installment of re reviewing my 2020 beauty purchases. This is the part one of the second half of 2020. So I am reviewing two hauls in this. Three. Three hauls. Yeah, I'm gonna... reviewing three hauls uh collective hall one two and three um which went up october 22nd 25th and 29th last year um this was my lockdown insanity craziness haul so let's get into it with the things i bought at the media sales um from mecca Mecca was having a media sale. They don't usually have good sales, but these ones were alright. So the first item was Urban Decay's YDK. Now, if you have watched me for a long time, you will know that I really struggled to declutter my naked two because of this shade specifically. It was the one shade I used in the palette. But oh, I loved it. And I still have a thing for this rosy, taupey beautifulness. Have I worn this much since I purchased it? No, because I haven't worn makeup much since I purchased this. Um, but it's a beautiful formula. I'm glad I have it. It was half price. So I think it was like 12 No. There's no way this was 12 This would have been $24 because they're normally $48. And then this would have taken me to free shipping. So I'm glad I have it. Uh, the other item I purchased to get to free shipping was the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Eyeshadow Stick in Rose. Sunset Rose. And warning, this was a very cream eyeshadow heavy haul. So, this has a cooling feeling which is really strange. Um, but the shade is really beautiful. It's like a coppery rose colour. It's really beautiful. Um, it applies really well, it stays really well. I really liked the kind of, what do I wear on my The slanted tip, so you can kind of get in really well. I like it. Again, have I used it much? No. But do I like it? And have I kept it? Yes. Something I did not keep was the Revlon Glaze Stick. And that was because this broke. It was a champagne cream shadow stick that broke, fell on the floor, and that means it went into bed. Um, as I said, this was a very, very cream eyeshadow heavy haul. Um, Chemist Warehouse had 50% off cosmetics, which was when I picked up that Revlon Glaze stick, as well as these two cream eyeshadows and a fourth cream eyeshadow. Um, so I picked up a good old Maybelline colour tattoo. They came back out with these, um, I'm not sure when, uh, but I picked up the colour Socialite and I was going to see a theme between the cream eyeshadows that I bought. Um, because when I wear a cream eyeshadow, I usually wear it as a base and a colour I wear a lot is a pinky champagne colour. So this is a shade Socialite, which is a slightly... It is very similar to Rose Sunset, but it doesn't have the gold sparkle of Rose Sunset Rose. But then I also purchased Reverend Praline, which is a more traditional champagne. Um, this is the shade I was more thinking of when I purchased both of these. Well, no, I knew, I knew these two were going to be different enough, but this is kind of the shade I was looking for. It, to me, was very reminiscent of Laura Mercier's Caviar Stick in Rose Gold, which I love and cannot justify repurchasing because of how many cream eyeshadows I have. But I have them. I use them. I have not used them enough again, but I have them, use them, and I kept them. What I have used up... Do I have any open? Unopened. Uh, 
the Flower Beauty Blending Sponge. I think I ended up buying three of it, hold three of these at a time because they, I bought one at this sale and then they'd had a second 50% off cosmetic sale by the time I hauled it and I bought two more. This is my favourite sponge from the drugstore that you can buy in Australia. It is not my favourite drugstore sponge. My favourite drugstore sponge is the L'Oreal Infallible Blend Artist sponge, which is not available in Australia. I freaking love this. So, those are my thoughts on drugstore sponges. All right. Another thing I purchased from Flower Beauty is this brush. This is the Precision Brush from Flower Beauty. I plan to use this for highlighter, but as it is fluffed out, it is way too large for my, how I prefer to do highlighter. So I've used it as an under eye setting brush and it is very soft, tapered, fits beautifully under the eye. And I really enjoy it. Um, I would consider buying more Flower Beauty brushes. I just have too many of them, too many brushes. Don't need any more brushes. I also don't want to go through and I also went through and got rid of some brushes and I still don't need any more brushes. The Revlon Prime Plus Primer. Hello everyone. This is the Mattifying and Pore Reducing Primer. Um, basically I don't have a lot of drugstore products in my collection um, and I wanted to give them a go. Um, so I thought I'd try this out. This has Artichoke Extract, Salicylic Acid and Alpha Hydroxy Acids. So I would definitely wear a sunscreen with this. Um, it's fine. And I think the reason I have so much high end is because I just find it works better for me. I may be a bit snobby, but that is just how I feel. This is fine. I'll use it, but I don't love it. Um, we have a lip balm that is in my handbag. The Revlon Juicy Peach Lip Balm. Big fan. Really like it. It's a really simple lip balm. It's a twist out lip balm, but it's really nice. It smells like peach. I like it a lot. Then we have the Shine Lipstick in Glossed Up Rose. This is the formula that replaced the lip butters, so I was really interested in this. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I really enjoy the... Oh, I don't know if you guys know this. I really enjoy the L'Oreal Colory Shines. Um, and this is a similar formula, so it's just a really nice rose colour, which I like a lot. Did I not buy this at the same time? Oh, no, I did. There we go. Maybelline Spicy Mauve. Written Sultry Mauve. It's Spicy Mauve, which is also from their, from their shine range. Um, this one is definitely more pigmented than the Revlon, and it is also more pigmented than the L'Oreal. So it's definitely a fuller colour lipstick, but it does still have that shine. It is very much a winter shade, but because we wore masks all winter or didn't leave the house, I definitely didn't wear this <laughs> enough. Um, and then the other lip product, which for some reason I didn't get out, is the Revlon Lip Oil in Bouncy Beige. Now, I really like this. I'm going to put this over the top. This is a really nice um, lip oil. It's not super colour. I'm just going to slightly warm up the lip colour I have on. But it is so comfortable. This is, I've decided that lip oils are my preferred gloss shine method because it is so smooth, still hydrating, still glossy, but it doesn't feel sticky like a gloss. Big fan of this. Um, for some reason, Pat McGrath was having a big sale. Again, the other one is in my purse. Um, and they had free shippings to Australia, so I purchased the mini lip balm set. Now, as I said, one is in my purse. That is Sex Guard, I think. It's the nude one. It's the only one I've used. I haven't used the clear. Literally, is still perfect. 
And I haven't used Flush 3, which is very similar to that Sultry Move shade. So again, it wasn't, I didn't wear lip products in winter because we wore masks. Um, the nude one I do really like. I like the formula of it. Um, I would not pay full price for a Pat McGrath lip balm, but they were fine. MAC had an offer for lipstick day, where if you purchased a MAC product, you got a free lipstick. So the MAC product I purchased was one of my favourite purchases from last year. This is the Glow Play Blush in Blush Please. I have it on today. I'm currently trying to see how much of it I can use in the year. It's in a pan. I don't think I'll plan it, but it's a really, this is a product that made me discover that I don't hate cream products. Now this is a cream to powder product. It is a bouncy product. And I really loved the Maybelline bouncy blushes when they were around. Um, it's just, it's so interesting. The color is fantastic. It wears so well on the cheek. Big, big fan of this blush. And the lipstick I got for free was Brave, which is a lot more pink than I thought it was. It's very similar to what I have on, uh, which is Hourglass, my one desire. I think it's my one desire. Um, I haven't worn it. I haven't worn lip products. I haven't worn any makeup, let's be honest. Um, so yes, there's that. And then the last product I hauled in this haul was to get my Beauty Loop Lucky Bag. And it was, not Lucky Bag, my Beauty Loop Lucky Bag. My Mecca Beauty Loop box. And it is the Urban Decay uh, All Nighter Ultra Matte. Which I haven't used because I haven't finished the setting spray that I thought I was nearly empty because I haven't worn makeup to a sense of theme. And of course, because we were in the height of COVID, it was also the skincare time to shine. So I purchased a Carolyn Hirons skincare kit with mum. And then I also, we bought both kits and split them for winter 2020, summer 2020. And then I also went and purchased things with the code. I only put, made one order. Nope, two lies. All right. The first thing was a cleansing mitt. Why I didn't go and get this, I don't know. It is a hand micro, not micro, it's a micro, yeah, microfiber cleansing mitt. Um, it's really nice. I think it does work really well at removing makeup. But it, with every each one of these microfiber kind of products, I still use a makeup remover with it. And I just use that as an assistance. So this was a good one. Um, the Ren Jelly Makeup Remover is my current morning cleanse. I'm really liking it. It's very similar to the Jordan Samuel Skin um, Aftershow Treatment Cleanser, I find, where it goes on jelly like, emulsifies, and turns milky. I'm really enjoying it. Um, we'll see how it goes in summer because I find the Jordan Samuel wasn't enough for morning for summer for me. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, and let's go into the fact that I haven't used three of these products. So, this is when I started, when I was writing up these lists, I started getting into the fact that I haven't opened a lot of the products I purchased last year, particularly skincare. Now, when I originally wrote this list, I hadn't finished the Jordan Samuel, so I hadn't even opened the Ren, but I have now. Um, we have the Hyalamide Sub-Q Skin, Skin Serum, the Pestle Mortar NMF uh, Free Lactic Acid Solution, and the Medicaid C Tetra Intense. I have not opened any of these products. Um, What am I using at the moment? I'm using the Eye Unique Rose Serum, which I purchased that after this. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I purchased it after this. Um, as my hydrating serum at the moment. It is nearly finished. Um, I also have another completely unopened hyaluronic acid serum in here. So this will be my next one that I do use when I use up the rose, which is in my project pan, to hopefully finally use that up. Um, as far as acids, um, the other ones that I did, uh, there was I did get two sets of acid in this. The other was the Zellens PHA Plus peel pads, which if you watch my empties, which would have gone like just before this, I did use those. But I'm now using the Exfolicate Cleanser. And then, even before I purchased this, I had the Biosance Squaline and Lactic Acid, which I haven't used. Um, so that is what I will be using before I use this. Um, so this will still be going unused for at least another six months, I think. It's a good thing that they don't go bad when you don't open them. But. And then the... Medicaid C Tetra Intense, I didn't use because I, this is a lipid base, so it is an oil based vitamin C and vitamin C is recommended to be used in the morning. I have oily skin and I've, every vitamin C I've ever used has been so heavy on me or so oily that I can't stand it. I have been using a mini allies of skin vitamin C at night. To still get the antioxidant benefits of vitamin C without dealing with it during the day, which is fine, okay? And it is totally okay to use vitamin C at night and to use it the same nights as retinols. And to, but the, the thing is, I can't use it every night because otherwise I'm acid, um, vitamin C, and Sunday Riley Luna, which I also got in this, which is a very low dose retinol oil. So I can use that with both the vitamin C and with an acid. Um, because I've been using the exfolicate, it's much lower a dose of an acid. So I have been able to use it more regularly. But when I go up to something higher dose, such as the Biosance, the Pestle Mortar, I would need to alternate. So I do plan to try using this in the same way, using it at night when I finish up the Allies of Skin. That is my thought process. Um, so as I said, the Zellens pads, used them up, very much enjoyed them, very expensive, I would try it and get them on a deal. Sunday Riley Luna Oil, I really enjoy, I use, enjoy a low dose retinol in an oil. That is all I need, I am, I'm, I will be 26 when this video goes up, or just after this video goes up, it's my birthday in like less than a week when I'm filming. So I don't need a high strength retinol. Um, that's why I enjoy the Jordan Samuel Retinol Oil and the Sunday Riley Luna Oil. We'll see when we get to part two or part three of this that I do have a, a Jordan Samuel Retinol Oil that I will use next. Um, but it's just a low dose to help clear my skin out, which is how I enjoy using that. Then we have the Shantakai Jasmine Lily Healing Mask. This is a very expensive product. But oh my goodness, has it done amazing things for my dermatitis. I haven't used it for a week and it has flared back up again. But I was using it every night just on my dermatitis and it had almost completely gone away. So I obviously need to keep using it until it completely goes away. But it for me is definitely a treatment. It is a treatment product. It's a healing product. Um, it is a mask, so I just put a thicker layer, so it kind of looks like I have a white dot over my dermatitis, and then leave it overnight, leave it, and it has calmed it down so much. I may need to always have that product in my life. I then placed an order on Pestle and Mortar and Mother Dirt for products because there was bounce back codes during that um, and then so from Pestle and Mortar I ordered a set of their face cloths which are one side muslin one side um, flannel which I really like 
I do the muslin first and then to wet my face and then the flannel to remove my cleanser and I really enjoy that. Um, and I also got a little kit. This kit came with their mist, a mini of their mist, which I used up. It was a fine mist, but it was just a mist. A eye cream, which I'm currently panning. A moisturizer, which it's called their lightweight moisturizer. And it was good in winter, but now it's starting to get hotter. It's too thick on my skin. So I'm trying to use that up. And then the product that I haven't used is their hyaluronic serum. Um, don't ask me why I bought a hyaluronic serum, a kit with a hyaluronic serum when I was getting the hyalamide, but I wanted to try a variety of their products because I hadn't heard of them before. Um, and yeah, I've enjoyed what I've used. I have enjoyed the, the mist was fine. The eye cream's fine. The moisturizer's fine. Like it's been fine. I haven't disliked them. But they're not something I would go out and repurchase. They're just not for my, like, the moisturizer is not for my skin type. The eye cream, again, it's fine. Um, it's an eye cream. Um, the mist was a mist. It was fine. So I'm interested to see. I will probably think this is just another hyaluronic acid and probably not worth the price, but that's that. And then, as I said, I placed an order on Mother Dirt. Um, I got their mist, their, their microbiome mist. Um, and I used that religiously kind of until it was used up. I talked about it in an empty zoo. And it was fine. It was a nice mist. I don't know if I really saw the benefits it was meant to have, but it was fine. What I did and do really like is their body oil. So it is an almond body oil in a spray mist and it is beautiful. It goes on the skin really well, it absorbs beautifully and it is currently my favorite way to moisturize my body. I love the scent. If you don't like the scent of almond, you will hate it. I really enjoy it. And then the Collective Hall Part 3 was a Cult Beauty and Muse Beauty Pro order. So we had the Cult Beauty order with their gift bag and then Muse Beauty had 20% off, I think. I don't remember. So let's go with Cult Beauty. We have the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Airbrush Bronzer in the shade 2. Now I picked up the shade 2 because everyone I had seen that uses that had the light shade, even the fair skin people said that it was too light. Now I have the Filmstar Bronze and Glow Duo and the bronzer in that is extremely light. And, um, I thought if the bronzer was like that, I'm not gonna want two of the same bronze. So I did pick up the medium. It is definitely deeper, but it is definitely something I can make work. Um, so it is a beautiful powder. The Charlotte Tilbury powders are extremely soft. It is a massive pan of bronzer. This is a 16 gram bronzer. It is huge. Um, for comparison, the Marc Jacobs Omega bronzers are 25 grams, so they are larger. But they look very similar in size, so I'm assuming this must be much thinner. Um, the other Charlotte Tilbury product I picked up, it is a new one, is as my camera died, I gouged my finger into this blush. So, great times. This is the Pillow Talk Cheek to Chic Blush. This is the Swish and Glow Blush. I did not know this when I was ordering this, that it was a glowy blush. At the time, I was expecting a matte. And at the time, I was not a big fan of glowy blushes. I have my... Um, Max. What's that blush called? Warm Soul. And that really was the only shimmery blush in my collection. Um, but I actually really enjoy this. This gives a very much of a pillow talk look, which is kind of a natural but enhanced look. I find that with the lipstick. I find that with this. Um, 
it is really beautiful. Now I don't do the swish and glow, I just mix them all together. The glow bit is not glowy enough for me. Um, but I actually really enjoy this and I have another shimmery blush that I, two more shimmery blushes now that I own and use regularly with this one. Um, so was actually, ended up being really happy with that. I purchased the Fresh Peach Pot Lip Balm, which I used up, which was not in my empties. Why was that not in my empties? Maybe I used it up before. I don't know. Um, it was a good lip balm, but I prefer the application of having it in a stick. Um, and the peach scent wasn't fantastic, so like it wasn't enough for me to be okay with having it in the little pot versus the stick fresh lip balms. Uh, the Kosas 10 Second Shadow in Globe. This is really nice. I enjoy it. It definitely is not something you can do in 10 seconds, I think. But it's a really nice bronzy shade. Um, it's very liquidy. You do need to definitely mix it up. And I definitely don't think I did because I have a watery edge there. But it's a really nice kind of metallic bronze shade. It's quite nice. My number one winner from this haul, though, from this cult beauty order, was the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in Blonde. This... I already had a passion for sparkly pressed shadows. But this just reignited it. This is a white base with a gold duochrome, and oh my goodness, it is absolutely amazing. Now, I have recently purchased the Victoria Beckham Red Luster in Honey, and it is not as magical. This is much more of just a standard metallic eyeshadow. It is not super shiny, it is not extra extra shiny or sparkly, it's just a standard um, shadow. Now this is one of the additional shades they created. They did Honey and Tea Rose, and both of them were on my list to get. But after getting Honey, I will not be purchasing Tea Rose because it is not as beautiful as Blonde. And these are very expensive eyeshadows. Um, so my vote is get Blonde. Don't get honey or tea. Right? Don't get honey. Get blonde. And then, as I said, it was a gift bag thing, so they give you a little bag. Uh, it came with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Light Minis. Was not a fan. Smelt very sunscreeny. It wasn't fantastic. I would not purchase it. It also came with the Cult Beauty reusable cotton rounds, which I have used. I do quite enjoy them. They are a nice reusable cotton round. Uh, we have the NARS Star Power Power Matte Lip Pigment, which is a fantastic red for Christmas, which is the only time I've worn this. But these can lick, which happened to my original Star Power. I don't know if the full size do, but the minis definitely do. So be very careful. Be very careful because this is basically water with red and it stains and it can make a mess. Um, and then the Natasha Denona palette, a five pan palette in a green grey colour story that I gave to Erin because it was much more her colour story than mine. Then Muse Beauty Pro was doing um, bundles and sales for something. I don't remember what it was for. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be really self-contained. I'm only going to get a one of the single, one of the... Um, sets of Viseart edit palettes. Um, I'm going to be self-controlled. I'm just going to get the one set. And then I looked at how much shipping was. And it was going to cost me the same amount in shipping as it was for me to spend to get to the free shipping threshold. So of course I went insane and just made it to the free sh shipping threshold rather than paying the same amount of money. As it would have. So, for the same amount of money, I got more product rather than paying for shipping, which made sense in my brain. So, 
let's start with the Viseart products. Um, I've got two of the Edit palettes um, and two of the Mini. These are Pro Edits and these are Minis. Um, it was what they had. I originally wasn't going to get Spritz Edit, but Spritz Edit is my favourite of what I've picked up. So I originally I got, no, no, Paris mustn't have been the one that I was going to get. No. Pretty sure Spritz was my second choice because what I was going to get wasn't in stock and they made me re-pick and I was thinking about getting Rose, but I'd gotten Paris and I didn't want too pinky, so I picked up Spritz. But I didn't know because I don't love oranges. But this is not orange. It has one coral, a pink and a burgundy. But otherwise it is neutral. And the winner winner shade in this palette is this one. Here it is like, it is the shade I want to use every time that I do it. It is a sparkly shiny coppery colour. Oh, it's just so pretty. But the mattes blend like Viseart mattes do. There's um, variation in the metallic. So that one is a full sparkly metallic. But these two up here are definitely softer metallics. Um, probably, they're not satins. They're not, they have more shine than the original Viseart satins. But they're not crazy. But they are super duper pigmented. So the... Spritz is definitely the one that I've used the most. Um, and then we have the Paris, which is, again, it has that two of the more sparkly shades, which are definitely the two I go for, and then four of the softer metallics. Again, this is much more a winter colour scheme for me and because I didn't wear makeup at basically at all this winter, I haven't used this one as much and I definitely haven't appreciated it as much as I thought I would considering this was my first choice and Spritz was not. And then I definitely didn't need both of these. So these were the two um, eight pans that had released just before. So we have the Solstice and the Midsummer. Um, they both have like this random duochrome in them, which is really funny. I definitely use Solstice more, um, because it has one of the sparkling metallics. This is really beautiful. Um, I use these two on the mattes. I haven't used these two anywhere near as much. Um, but it barely looks like I've used it. Um, because I bought four eyeshadow palettes in a row. Um, and I, as I said, I've definitely not used Midsummer anywhere near as much as I should have. Now my thought process is these pop out. So I might, the reason I don't use this is because the only shimmery metallics, like any metallics, are the duochrome and the soft pink. The rest of these are matte. This is a matte with a glitter in it, but it acts as a matte. Whereas the Solstice has four mattes, four shimmers. And I really like a combination of matte and shimmers. Now I could use this with a sparkle shadow. And I think if I go into it thinking of this as a matte palette rather than an all-in-one palette, I would use it more. Because the tones are my favourite moviness. It is beautiful. And I have movie sparkles I could definitely wear with this. So I think I just need to go into it thinking of it that way rather than an all-inclusive palette because like this duochrome shade is beautiful but it's just not something I regularly use and as a duochrome it is a topper duochrome. You aren't going to get a lot of BAM on its own. So that is my thought about buying for Viseart Petite Pro and Edit. There we go. Um, and then as I was, I was saying, I'm like, I'm not paying for shipping when shipping is so ridiculous. So I went to the, like, went to the free shipping cap um, and bought a trio of the Eason liners. If you have been watching my monthly makeup baskets, you'll know that I've decluttered two of these 
Now, I only kept one and the only reason I kept it was for the um, shimmery lilac side. The burgundy is fine, but I cannot use these eyeliners as tight line. They smudge, they transfer, they don't stay. The soft pink, what's it called? The rosé shade stays in my waterline really well, like lower waterline, but all of the dark shades on my upper transferred. And then it was a gold and a like a white that I just didn't like in the sparkles. So I got rid of the black and the brown duos and just kept this one. I would not repurchase these. This is not a great liner formula, but I don't have a metallic pink liner and I really kind of like this one. So that's why I kept that one. And then the other thing I bought was a Lash in the Box set that came with a glue um, because I needed a new lash glue and a set of lashes which I haven't worn. And they are reminiscent of a Ardell Demi Wispy but thicker. So the clumps are thicker, there are more lashes in them, but I haven't worn them and I've gone and bought a million pairs of false lashes recently. So those, that is part one of the second half of 2020 reviewing my beauty purchases. It was a long one, I am aware, but that is what it is. Um, lots of unopened skincare. Lots of wins. I feel like there was definitely a lot of wins, but definitely a lot of stuff I haven't used anywhere near enough since I posted these hauls. And I think that has very much been the theme of this series, is I have not used makeup anywhere near enough this year to justify how much makeup I purchased last year. And then I have gone and still purchased makeup this year, so that is that. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what products you have purchased but not opened or things you have used like once in the year that you've owned them. So I don't feel alone. Uh, click subscribe to stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.